pain. So just a few things about how we get this job done throughout the presentation. We're gonna move pretty quick. We have a couple of surprises for you and it's just gonna be a fantastic event. But we could not do this event without our sponsor. And today we are so excited that for the third year, I think in a row, we are sponsored. This event is because of Payne West Insurance. They are 100% sponsor of this event. And so with that, I want to welcome my friend Pete Schneider up here to tell you just a little bit about why they're doing this. Get up here, Pete. And be sure to talk right into the mic. Everybody talk right into the mic. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me? All right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, well, thank you, first of all, CFDA. This is a, just an incredible, incredible event. We're, we're happy to be part of it. With, with Kane West, we've been with, in the Great Falls community, over four decades. I mean, through our legacy, we continue to evolve. We continue to have new folks on staff. And I just want to mention some of our employees that are here in support of this. We've got Kara Pacono, Jess Stenzel, Stephanie Thompson, Jennifer Webster, Amy Flatland, Cynthia Shields, Bridger Brennan, and Vicki Lynn Tremska. So with that, thank you, everybody. As we know, partnerships are important. Without partnerships, it's really tough to succeed. So with that, we're, we're very, very happy to be a partner. We've got a video here that we're gonna show that just captures what partnership means with Pain West. So we're gonna play that now, and I wanna thank everybody for the, the opportunity to speak and be a partner here. Thanks. Payne West Insurance is sure proud to sponsor this event this year and every year that we have. Uh, this year though, it gives us an opportunity to um, bring up a subject that we think is really important. It's a discussion we're having with a lot of our clients and that's cyber. Uh, over the last 18 months with COVID, we've become more reliant on technology, uh, transferring data electronically uh, than we ever have before. And uh, what we're noticing is an, a huge uptick in cyber breaches, ransomware, data loss. And it's something that each business, no matter what size you are, should be talking about. We hear it a lot out there that, hey, this, this won't happen to me. That's a tough way to, to run a business in today's environment uh, because of, of the uh, uh, actual intensity with which we're seeing cyber attacks. There's a lot of things that we do to try to prevent attacks. And some of it's just training of our colleagues. It's uh, sending out samples of what a phishing email would look like. But it's not always just phishing. Sometimes they're, you know, they're getting in other ways. It's, but we, we're trying to train them in every way possible to, just to help prevent the risk. I think a lot of companies think that threat actors just steal your data. And in a lot of cases that we see, they actually lock it down uh, to the point where you are unable to even do everyday business functions. How do you communicate with your employees? How are you processing payroll? How do you communicate with your own clients? Uh, real things that you do every day that you take for granted, and they found a way to, to prevent you from doing that. If you're a business owner and if you're looking at your organization, what would it mean to you to be shut down for three, four, five days or, or even weeks potentially? What would that mean to you, uh, your ability to, to work with your clients? And so uh, that is a, another reason and another uh, purpose behind why we, we work so hard with our insurance to look at products that can address those kind of issues. At Payne West Insurance, we love insurance. It's what we do. Uh, but one thing that we're even more passionate about is making sure that our clients and our business partners throughout our community are taken care of properly. And cyber is one of those that are, it's very, very important for every company to take a look at. And uh, whether you do business with in Payne West Insurance or another agency, I just encourage you to understand what plan could you have in place now what coverages should you have in place to bring a team to surround you in the moments that matter, uh, in the oh crap moments, if you will, uh, when you realize that the risk in front of you could actually spell catastrophe for your company.
Excellent. Thank you, Payne West, for once again sponsoring Ignite 2023. We really, really appreciate it and appreciate all you do in our community. Thank you. All right, let's get this going. So our speakers know this is a fast moving event. You have three minutes. I'm going to time you. Um, I don't have a hook, but I will come and just politely stand next to the, and then I will start staring at you if you are going over so that we can keep this moving for all of our guests here. Uh, so to kick us off today, pretty excited to invite Colonel Dan Voorhees uh, with Malstrom Air Force Base. Logging up from the back, I love it. Three minutes, here we go. Right. Hey, uh, we're first because we don't really produce anything other than the most important thing, which is uh, security for the country. So what we do, uh, well, what we do is I think we set the foundation for the community to be able to grow. And part, the reason I say that is because we're not going anywhere. So people talk a lot about racks, a lot about different things. That's not, that's like a thing of the past. We have a new weapon system that's coming, Sentinel. Uh, it's scheduled. It's designed to last until 2075. That's the design life of it, not just uh, the Minuteman was designed to last 10 years. It's last. 50 years. So design life is until 2075. So the base isn't going anywhere. So that's a great thing because that's an anchor in the community that's going to keep the 5,000 plus people that we have, dependents and military and civilians that are working and living on that base here in the community. So that's why I like to bring that up first. The second thing is we have to now maintain our base to be there until 2075. There's a lot of deferred maintenance on the base. We were, just, we were just chatting about this the other day. There's like two, $350 million worth of deferred maintenance that we have done on the base that now needs to continuously be done. All the way from sewer pipes to buildings to roofs, everything, just like you would for any structure that you know was built years ago. So that is another thing that is going on. So this year alone, we have 26 projects for roughly $30 million. We have a weapons generation facility that's going in that will be starting at the end of this year. That's a $235 million um, project. And then we have the Sentinel project that is coming that will be anywhere from stuff starting on base in 26 all the way until out in the missile fields in 30 to 33. So what I guess I'm saying is that's a lot of military. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of time. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be part of the community for a really long time, which is awesome. The only three things that I will hit and then I'm going to get off and hopefully um, have a little extra time for other people when they go over is we have three, always three concerns uh, right now. And I think you guys will understand these for us. The big three are housing, child care, and then like our, our other one would be spousal reciprocity for life insurance so that they can come and work for you immediately and not have to put in and get other you know courses done so that they can teach a class or cut hair or be a lawyer or practice medicine or whatever it is that they can just come right in. So those are our three big ones. I'll say them again. Obviously housing, not just apartments. People like to live in homes as well. So affordable housing is great. Um, Childcare, it is an imperative. I was talking to Mr. Walker in the back. Um, he works on base with me and we were just chatting about the airmen that come in today are not the airmen that came in 20 years ago. They're showing up with, the 18 year old used to show up and if we could give him a dining facility car and he lived in the dorms and that's all he needed or she needed. And now they're showing up with families and kids. And so they instantly at 18 are needing a place to put their child and they're needing a place to live that is not in the dorm room. And then um, I think that's it. I have some ch little charts on a break if you want to get one. They're really small. My 22 year old self would have been able to read it. My 50 year old self can't read it. But um, if you've got some good glasses, you might be able to. But we've got a bunch in the back, so swing by. Thank you. Well done, well done. And you are on time. That's fantastic. All right, so here's one of those nuggets for you. The military buys everything, right? They literally buy everything. Because you're talking about supplying um, troops with everything that they need to live. But then you're also talking about mission critical infrastructure. So one of the things that we do is we help people get registered to sell to the government because you have to be registered in the system, but then you also have to know how to be prepared to win the bid. So we have a couple of team members, Lillian and Shannon, who do that for free for businesses here. And this is really critical as we prepare for the missile upgrade, which, which won't be for, for years still. 
It's really important that local businesses get in that system now, get familiar with it, and start winning some contracts so that they have a track record with the military. So tell all of your business friends if they're not registered in SAM so that they can sell to the government, come see us, come see Lillian or Shannon and let's get them registered. Okay, so we're moving from Maelstrom to fitness. And I'd like to bring up my friend, Jeff Spurgeon, who is gonna come up and talk about his new venture. Jeff, come on up. Nice, so excited to be here. Um, thank you, GFDA, Duke Between West. Um, JS Fitness and Wellness. My name is Jeff Spurgeon, and I've been doing personal training for over 25 years. Just moved back. I'm born and raised um, Great Falls, DMR graduate. Um, but I had a DMR graduate. But I had a I had a facility in Portland for over 30 years. I did corporate fitness for Nike. I did a lot of semiconductor companies, corporate fitness. But my wife and I, Chris Virgin, we are so excited to be in the Great Falls community and be back. Um, we just feel like people are so genuine. And I think we love the atmosphere a lot better than Portland. I'm just saying. Um, but we are excited to be here. Um, just a couple things about JS Fitness Wellness. Private facility, 1,300 square feet. Um, definitely more intimate, professional, brand new. I just got done remodeling it myself, myself actually. Um, and if you like working out in a private facility, private gym, having lots of special attention with all your needs, you'll love various fitness and wellness. Okay, I'm gonna try to move. Okay, three minutes. See if I can do it. Okay, it's January 2023. I'm sure most of you are thinking about starting a program, or trying to start a program. Maybe we uh, revert back to our high school days and we think we can still do things we used to in high school and college. We hurt ourselves. Okay. That's where we come in. We want to give you the proper guidance, technique, um, just the proper, um, keep your program simple, get results. We listen, we focus, we encourage, and we, we, all of our programs are individually tailored based on your personal needs too. And that means if I train people, three people, four people, two people, it doesn't matter. We'll make it very specialized. My main concern is your health. My main concern is your health and taking care of you. I think that's the difference you'll find with us. And over 25 years experience doing this, I'm going to take really good care of anybody and everybody from the professional athlete all the way down to somebody that's in their 80 years old. So I train a little bit of everybody. It, it is me you're going to see if you come to JS Fitness alone. Okay, so that is who you're going to see. So um, how many of you wake up in the morning and you're sore, you're tired, you can't get out of bed, you don't feel good? Anybody? Sometimes? Stiff? Sometimes? Yes? Imagine wake up in the morning and you feel good, okay? Everything feels good, you feel healthy, you feel like you can conquer the day. That's where we want to help you guys, okay? Um, think of us as the best health insurance, life insurance plan you could ever you could ever do for yourself, okay? We do a little bit of everything, balance, mobility, strength. I think the biggest thing is corrective exercise, sure, weight loss, fat loss, teaching you how to do it efficiently and safe, too and utilizing your time is what we really try to focus on for you. But the biggest thing is how do you move? What hurts? That is what we want to get to. We'll work with your doctor, physical therapist, or chiropractor in the area. And um, I don't know if I said it already, but we're excited to be here. Uh-oh, what do we got, 30 seconds? Okay, I knew it. It's different when you're at home practicing. You know what? I thought it was still pretty fast. But anyway, come and see us. We offer private semi-private. I do do corporate fitness. I do virtual fitness. I'm opening my doors January 16th, this coming Monday. Um, and just a side note, again, super happy to be here. And I hope we can help everybody and see everybody. And anybody that wants to come try me out that's in this room, first session is free. If you can. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Welcome home. Thanks for coming back. This is exciting. Well done. Well done. Okay, and very quick. We have the clicker. I found the clicker. All right, uh, our next presentation, I'm pretty excited. If you have seen the uh, cranes and all the constructions back in uh, the south part of Great Falls, well, our next presenter is here to tell you about it. Wayne Gillis with the Great Falls Clinic. 
Come on up, Wayne. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, it is very, very exciting for me to talk about, you know, some significant growth that's happening at the clinic. Clinics, you know, has been in existence since 1917, so a little over 100 years. And we kicked off probably in May of last year, a big growth project. So what we're ended up doing in the hospital is we've got the surgery center that's expanded. Um, we're doubling the square footage in the actual facility. So we're about, the hospital itself is about 60,000 square feet. We're adding 59,000. So as you can see from the front of the hospital, which is where the tower is going, and that's what January 11th, it looks like. Now we've got, um, you know, brick around it. So what's going to be in that space is that is really the largest part of the construction for the hospital. Um, three stories. First story is going to be a 10-bed ICU, um, two cath labs, um, a pre and post procedural space that will support the cath lab as well as endoscopy and bronx. The second floor is going to be another um, med surge unit. And then the third floor will be a third med surge unit. So we go from 19 beds to 74. So almost triple the size of it. it it's going to allow us really to be a little more diversified, you know, have more specialties, add more acuity. And so we are scheduled to open the tower um, September of this year. So quite exciting for us. So anybody that has any nursing friends, <laughs> respiratory therapists, ultrasound techs, any of that stuff, please send them our way. Um, the other thing that's gonna change for us too is when we think about the hospital kind of campus, it's more of a U and we're flipping the emergency room entrance to the front of the hospital, which will probably logistically make a lot more sense for our patients, especially when it's the first time. Okay, that's it. I must have been okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Wayne. Yeah. Exciting project. Another exciting project. All right. Well, let's move our attention to. I'll pick up that. There we go. Let's go ahead and move our attention to downtown Great Falls. And I'd like to invite Ty Rollins with the Gibson to come up and present. Come on up, Ty. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I am the uh, crazy person that uh, bought the gravestone. A friend of mine refers to it as the uh, the, gra the uh, gravestone. Anyhow, uh, I presented uh, back in uh, the Ignite uh, 2020, and uh, we at that time were scheduled to open or start construction. I mean, in March of 2020. And as you can imagine, March of 2020 did not look the way that we were hoping. Due to the pandemic, we uh, have been greatly delayed and it broke our heart that we ended up with a building that uh, sat empty for a couple of years. Uh, but we are currently under construction. Uh, we started uh, May of last year and we are now uh, projected to open our doors in May. And uh, we will be uh, the Gibson uh, Hotel. And uh, I, what I want to do is I want to start out by telling you a little bit about what makes the Gibson unique. First of all, each of our rooms will only have one team bed. We will be catering to business travelers and couples. Um, there we go. In the morning, our guests will have a basket delivered to their room at the time that they select. In this basket, they will find breakfast items that they have selected the night before, items such as fruit, yogurt, juices, coffees, uh, et cetera. But the most important is pastries from the Crooked Tree. We are super excited to be partnered with the Crooked Tree to be able to introduce their amazing pastries to our guests. And every evening, we will be having a manager's reception 
where we will be serving bite-sized samples from local restaurants. Uh, if you own a restaurant, Great Falls, we'd love to partner with you. Uh, and uh, Or if you play an instrument at all, uh, uh, guitar, piano, cello, whatever, keyboard, whatever it may be, we'd love for you to come and uh, play for our guests at our manager's receptions every evening. Uh, let's see, there, will, there are many places uh, that deliver clean rooms with comfortable bed. At the Gibson, you'll find first-class amenities with beds that are second to none. But the Gibson, you'll get an experience like none other. With the hospitality industry moving towards less and less interaction between staff and guests, at some places, you can check in with your phone. You can use your phone as your key, and you can check out without ever interacting with the guests or with the, the staff at the hotel. But at the Gibson, we want more interaction with our guests. We want to elevate our guest experience in Great Falls. We want to be their personal concierge. We believe that when our guests really experience all that Great Falls has to offer, they'll keep coming back again and again. Uh, I'm going to put up here my contact information. If you have a restaurant, or if you uh, play an instrument, or if you have a business that would like to interact in some way with my, with the Gibson, please contact me. Send me a text, send me an email. We're super excited to be here at Great Falls. We're grateful for Spark Architecture, Tobacco Construction, the GFBA, everyone else here has just been absolutely amazing. Thank you, Great Falls. Thank you so much, Kyle. We're grateful for you. And Okay, so you barter because waking up and having a basket of muffins, I play guitar. I mean, okay, all right, I'll be reaching out to you. But that sounds fantastic, rather than me waking up and making food for the family. I like it. All right, so let me give you another nugget to take away with you, and that is how do we make difficult deals work, especially right now with rising interest rates, with rising construction costs. Um, is some deals are getting trickier and trickier to make happen. And that's why we have put together um, a cadre of tools and resources to help. So we have loan funds that you can bring to make a good deal work. Uh, and we are here to assist bankers, realtors, anybody in making sure that their project can still happen. Uh, we're really creative when it comes to putting together uh, state incentives and using the state tools that have been given to us and that are still being created now. Uh, so just keep that in your back pocket uh, because when somebody wants to do a deal and it's, and it's a good project, but their equity needs have risen so high that maybe they just can't, they can't hit it, have them call us. That is where we specialize in coming in and filling that gap or filling that mezzanine financing on construction deals. Um, so just keep that tidbit and uh, share that please when the time is right. All right, so I'd like to bring up our next speaker um, we're bringing up Amber Pearson with Pines and Plains Realty to tell you about her new venture. Amber? Good morning. I did not expect it to be anywhere near as many people as we did today. So thank you all for coming out this morning. Um, I am opening today, well, this month, Pines and Plains Realty. I have been a broker for about six months now, but I've been a realtor for 13 years. And I have been super blessed to have really incredible brokers and realtors in my life who taught me how to do my job. But that's not common in our industry. In fact, real estate has one of the highest turnover rates. Almost nine out of 10 realtors will fail out within their first 10 years. And Great Falls deserves better. So I am showing, that's not the down button, sorry. I am starting a three year one-on-one -on -one mentorship program for incoming realtors or realtors who have been struggling over the past few years and want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one coordination. So each year of all three of these years, you will shadow with an experienced broker. You'll get weekly coaching, mentoring tips. You'll be taught how to network. You'll be taught how to create those relationships because as any of the realtors in here will tell you, relationships are the name of the game. Um, by the third year, hopefully, if, our, if we're doing our jobs right, you will be able to qualify for a broker's license. You will be ready to join any brokerage in Great Falls with the experience that you need to have a successful business. 
And if you have any questions or you'd like to join us as a broker or as a mentor, go ahead and scan that QR code. You've got my access info. Thank you. That was perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I am pretty excited to uh, to welcome our next speaker. You might have heard that they made an announcement um, in the last couple of weeks. And so here from the University of Providence is Mackenzie Sick. Come on up, Mackenzie. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for having the University of Providence represented here at Ignite. Very excited to be here. Um, just a few um, slides I want to go through just to share with you a little bit about the exciting happenings at the University of Providence. So first, I'd like to kind of just give you a little bit of a framework on where we or why we are doing some of the things that we're doing. Um, as a leadership team at the university, we've kind of, there's been some very, very prominent emerging themes at the university. First being is just a really strong reconnection with our history and our mission. Um, one of the things that for those of you who don't know about the University of Providence, our biggest mission is serving the underserved, taking care of the poor and vulnerable, and making higher education a reality for anybody who wants to pursue higher education. And so that's one of the driving forces in everything we do. And as we make more announce announcements and turn the corner into the future, that's going to be the driving factor in uh, the University of Providence and um, what we're looking forward to, to moving towards. The second, and many of you in the room today know this um, because we've reached out to you on one way or another, partnership, par partnerships just in general. But one of the things we really feel is incredibly important is partnering with everybody here um, in whatever capacity is necessary. So reaching out to businesses, our friends at other colleges and, at colleges and universities, um, basically making sure that we're doing everything we can to be a friend to Great Falls, be a good partner to our region and the state of Montana. So um, that's really another driving force. And then the third, of course, is enrollment growth, as any college and university would um, attest to. And we're doing that both through program development and just through looking at unique recruitment initiatives. Follow us on social. We've got just completely reorganized our social media content and we're doing a really good job getting our story out now. In terms of programs, okay, I gotta figure this out. Oh, here we go. So one of the first programs that we've decided to launch for fall 23, and we are taking our first intake for fall 23, that application should be live very soon, is an applied math program. And this isn't just like a general run-of-the-mill math major, um, no offense to anybody who did pursue a degree in math. This is a little bit more hands-on. So instead of those theoretical concepts, it's hands-on, how do you take the, the math that you're learning and apply it to the real world? So students have the ability to customize um, it grabs everything that they want to grab, um, you know, in terms of the comprehensiveness, and then it, it, does, it does contain real world application. We will have two concentrations and three minors tied to this degree. And as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, work that students can go into after getting this degree. And then, of course, a lot of you've heard probably on the news or through other channels um, that we are going to be launching our traditional PSN program. Um, our first intake will be fall 23, so this upcoming fall. The application is live, um, so we're very excited about that. We have a full catalog, so a lot of uh, degrees in nursing already in terms of masters. I'm so sorry. I'm not good at being short. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we have a lot of different things going on in terms of that, but we were missing that traditional aspect. So we certainly wanted to make sure that we... Uh, created this program. It was due to a large donation from the Vanderworth family. Super excited. And um, we've already got, the last slide is just um, staff are being hired. Um, we've got some specific renderings. Uh, we're, we're still in that process. Um, we'll have a new, so we'll have a new sim lab, a new lecture hall. Oh, this is really stressful. 
I'm not known to be for, uh, short winded. So I think that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. We're very excited to see this, these opportunities at University of Providence. So I think many of you know, but I know that there's a lot of people that don't know how uh, GSEA is able to do what we're able to do. Um, we are, we do quite a bit, right? We have a very diverse team. So we like to say we're mighty, but we're scrappy uh, because we have one of the lowest budgets for economic development in the state of Montana, but I think we're able to use it really effectively. So the way that our budget is formed is by investors. And I know that most of you know that because many of you are investors. Uh, we have companies that cut us a check every year and tell us, go out there and grow the economy. And that's what we do. So if you're a GFDA investor, will you please stand up? Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's give everybody a round of applause. We absolutely could not get these things accomplished without our investors. They are the lifeblood of our community and they're investing in growing Great Falls. So thank you so very much. Okay, so, oh, and if you're not an investor, Jen Gallmeyer on our team would love to speak with you. So find a GFDA team member. There's Jen over here and talk to Jen. She'll, she'll, she'll get you signed up. All right, so we have a new company that entered our market, and unfortunately, Josh Worrell uh, was unable to be here. He really wanted to be here today, um, but we wanted to give you a little taste for uh, TDS Telecommunications LLC. So they're going to be delivering all fiber networks to Great Falls this year, uh, and in its first 18 months of building their fiber network across Montana, they've infused tens of thousands of dollars in local sponsorship and donations to charitable organizations, and they are one of the newest uh, Great Falls Development Authority investors. So we're very thankful to them. Uh, but they did give us a video to play. Here we go. I don't have to worry about that with TDS. I know it's going to be up. I know it's going to be fast. And it's just one less thing for me to worry about. We're excited to be in Eau Claire today to officially break ground for our fiber internet project. We are you know, building the network here in Twin Falls. A new cable provider is coming to the Missoula area. Fourth and fifth communities in Montana where TDS Telecommunications is building a new all-fiber network. High-speed internet is a step closer for thousands of addresses in Green Bay. Chippewa Falls and Altoona on Alaska and Sparta. I'm excited to be the very first part of that and this new build out here. I mean, where can you go or when do you have the opportunity to do that? I know that what TDS is doing here is about as good as it gets. TDS Telecommunications. TDS Fiber. TDS Communications. TDS. 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 TDS Telecom, you guys do a lot for the communities. Our company culture is very uh, community focused and, and based, so we're proud of that. That's kind of part of the fabric of TDS, is to give back to the communities that we serve and kind of out local, the local providers that are in the marketplace. Thank you for the welcoming. We, we could not feel more welcome. Love the partnership, and we're going to be here for a long time with you. Thank you. To, uh, TDS, and it's too bad they couldn't be here for that. All right. We have an announcement to make. Can I please get Leanne Taylor with the state of Montana, Greg Joy and our city manager, Brett Doney, our city commissioners and county commissioners right up here. And may I please have Dave Loboy and Chris come up here. Come on, right over here, guys. Right here, right front and center. Right front and center. There, that's better. All right, guys, what's our announcement? So we're very excited to announce that we're doing an expansion and remodel of our current special oil plant. So it will be an investment of about $15 million. 
Woo! Excellent, thank you. All right, so we're gonna take a quick photo. Here we go. All right, thank you. All right, guys, come on up and let's hear about these announcements. All right, and thank you to the CMR Drum Corps here. We really appreciate you. All right, Dave, with Montana Specialty Mills, here is the clicker, the down button. Good morning, I'm Dave Lobo. I am the president of Montana Specialty Mills. Welcome, everybody. I hate this fucking phone. We're definitely excited to be part of Montana agriculture and also being able to promote Montana irrigation. So part of part of our strategic plan is to continue to, to grow in the specialty oil sector. Uh, Montana Specialty Mills uh, oil plant. Sorry. Gives you a little view of the plan. I need to learn how to use these clickers, obviously. Uh, so this is our, our special oil plant currently. Um, our expansion is actually going to increase our capacity three times from what it is today. We were founded in 1997. I have two facilities, one in Conrad and then one in Great Falls. The, Great, the original Great Falls plan is no longer there and that was the original expansion and joint venture between Columbia Grain and Evans Grain and started operations on the special oil plant in 2019. Our Conrad plant, just real quickly, is a mustard cleaning and grinding facility. So we're bringing in mustard seed, cleaning it up, or actually grinding it. And it's an ingredient that's used in quite a few food products and the pepperoni, that type of thing, then also sold just as in whole seed for food grade mustard. The special oil plant is located in the agribusiness park. Uh, we primarily focus on the natural food sector. So it's non-GMO and organic canola oil. We also bring in flaxseed and produce a, a what, when you process flaxseed, you actually turn it into linseed oil, which is used primarily in varnishes and paints. Our expansion, again, will increase capacity about three times, so we'll also put an additional building at our current location. Other exciting thing that's happened, our majority ownership is Columbia Grain, which just recently purchased its uh, building in downtown Great Falls, which Montana Specialty Mill leases the main floor of the facility and shares that office space. I think that's all I have. I must have been for my three minutes, so thank you. That was phenomenal, thank you. And that's the first time that anybody in Great Falls has heard about your expansion to outside of your team. So thank you for sharing that great news here at Ignite 2023. All right, so um, our next, speaking of the city of Great Falls, our next presenter is uh, my colleague and friend, Craig Raymond. Craig, come tell us what's going on with the city. There we go. Okay. Good morning. Happy to be here, and I'm especially happy that it's Friday. <laughs> Can I get an amen to that? <laughs> it's been an interesting week. There was probably at least once this week where I thought I might have to use a defibrillator on Jake. Here. So it's been interesting, but we're all here, and I'm thankful for that. So I'm here to talk about the Civic Center project. I think you've all been watching that happen over the last over a year now, and uh, so we're just kind of going to show it off a little bit and explain what that's all about. Here's an older picture uh, of the building. Uh, where's the, the little laser? 
Okay, so maybe I'll just go down here and point to it. You can see some of the cracks and everything that's been developing over the years. Uh, the building was actually completed in 1940. Um, and it's a little bit surprising with what had been happening since then. It's a little bit hard to see from the ground floor, um, but you can see where the building was actually starting to crack, moisture was getting in, rebar was corroding and so on. And uh, so ultimately it was kind of time to do something because when these chunks fall off the building, it's a really, really bad day. It's great for the attorneys, but it's a bad day for the city of St. Paul. And this is a project that was a long time in the making. Uh, there was a report that was initially done back in 2011, uh, really kind of delineating the need of, of the renovation. So as we started, well, let me go back. You can see a little square, um, I'll just point to it right here. That was one of the things we did early on to kind of do some material testing and figure out what the heck we're getting into. And this is what we found out we're getting into. This is kind of what's underneath the face of the building. And you can see kind of the haphazard sort of way that some of the bricks and everything is kind of thrown in there. And we have run into this quite a bit, actually. It's a little bit disappointing. You think 1930s, craftsmanship, everything should be good. But we have some examples of this. And it's kind of like, okay, this must have been shortly after payday. Because clearly <laughs> somebody was hung over over there laying this brick. But you know, you, you, you expose it, you identify it, and you just kind of deal with it and go, and go on with it. Here's another example that's a little bit better, but it's just kind of fascinating method of construction. So here's what we have going on. This is some of the finished product. And it's a little bit tough to see again behind some of the scaffolding and things like that, but um, it's really, really going to look nice when it's done. Another example. We've had, for the most part, uh, those stone panels are primarily what we're replacing. Um, some of the brick we've had to replace just because things that have kind of popped up and exposed themselves. Uh, but for the most part, it's the stone panels uh, that we're replacing. Another shot right there of the finished product. So originally, we were going to be done next month. Um, and as things kind of happen, uh, you kind of have to adjust your schedule a little bit. And they're going to be shutting down uh, temporarily here coming up soon just because of the, the type of work that remains to be done. You don't want to be doing that work when it's really cold outside. So we're at that point where we're about ready to, to close up until March and then we'll hopefully finish in August. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kenny. Terrific. All right. Housing, housing is a huge issue here. So we are, and everywhere, not just here, but some of the ways that we are addressing those are with new apartments. And I'm really excited to invite up uh, Gina Rivelli with the ARC Apartment Homes. Gina, come up here and tell us about your project. Good morning, everyone. We are excited to be back in Great Falls to offer our department. So we're a 216 unit uh, multifamily housing. We will be offering um, studios up to two bedrooms, two baths. We are a little behind in construction due to the pandemic, as everybody knows, it's a little hard these days. Um, we are finally open. We have opened one building successfully. We are leasing building three now. We are anticipating completion July of 2023. But we encourage everybody to stop by, come see us, uh, find your current, maybe find an apartment. If it's something that you're not looking for, somebody else may be. But come by, take a tour, visit our website. It's artgreatfalls.com. And we just want to thank everybody for allowing us to come back into Great Falls and build some amazing housing for you guys. Thank you, guys. Well done, short and sweet. Thank you. We're excited to have the ARC opening. Pretty excited. Housing um, is uh, and creating housing and home ownership opportunities is one of our key strategic, strategic initiatives at GFDA. And so we're constantly looking out there in other markets and other similar markets to see who is building and then try to entice them here. So if you have contacts, if you have a project that you want to do, 
talk to Jay Clark right up here. He is leading our housing production task force um, and home ownership opportunities. So um, we need to create more of those. We have several projects in the pipeline now, but now it's a matter of getting those into build uh, because we need it at all levels. So that is a, a key priority of ours. All right, let's see, what's next? Oh, excellent. So next, uh, I get to invite my friend John Faulkner up here to tell you what they have going on up at the airport. John, get up here. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. I'll, I'll go pretty quick because we've got a few slides. Um, if you haven't traveled in the last six months, um, the 50 seat jets are used to in Great Falls. We had about two decades of 50 seat jets. They're completely gone. This is the fleet of airplanes that serves Great Falls now. There's 76 seat jets. Um, they're all E jets, Embry Air jets. Um, it has the same seat width as a 737. It's a very comfortable plane, uh, terrific plane, and we're really excited to have them. That represents a challenge for our community, as we've all talked about in the past. We haven't had a lot of community growth. Now we have larger planes uh, still without a lot of community growth, uh, which means we have a lot more seats to start the year. Uh, we have about 10% more seats in the first uh, five months of the year than we had in 19. Um, so that's a challenge. We've got to fill those planes. Uh, we're working on some other things you've probably heard already. Minneapolis is coming back uh, a little over a month, uh, February 17th, first flight. We also put together a pretty aggressive community package. We haven't had a, a real aggressive community package in a while. We have $1.3 million to pursue Dallas flights. Uh, we think that's likely a 24 type of project, but it's pretty exciting to finally have a competitive pool. That's about the same amount of money that brought those same flights to Billings, Missoula, and Kalispell. So we're really excited to have that pool. We also have a second pool uh, for an ultra low cost carrier. We're having some really good conversations about 24 uh, with a couple of low-cost carriers, and um, we'll be looking ahead to that. Uh, conversations over the next six months to nine months, and we should have a pretty good handle on uh, what 24 will look like. Hopefully, we'll have, uh, an incentive, have that incentive signed by Christmas with American to bring them in next summer. This kind of gives you an idea. It's hard to see the numbers, I'm sure, in the back of what I was talking about earlier. We have about 11% more seats in, uh, than we did in 19. Um, this is the weakest time of year for Great Falls travel, January and February are absolutely the pits. Um, so if you get a chance, the fares are really aggressive right now. Uh, consider a spring break trip, try to get these seats filled up so we can maintain the schedules that uh, the airlines have invested in this, this year. We've got some modernization efforts going on. Um, the ticket counters have not, been have not been renovated in 50 years. The bag belts that take your bag back are 50 years old. Uh, we actually have to, United doesn't even have a screening machine. The bags go back a belt. They put them on a little hand trolley and carry them around from the Delta side and scan them. It's a real mess. Um, so we're renovating all that. Um, the first ticket counters will open in February. Delta and Allegiant will be moving to new counters. This has been pushed back about 30 feet from where they are now. And this gives you kind of an idea what the new system will look like. Uh, we'll have a uniform wall there. We'll have screens in the back. It'll look very modern. If you're familiar with the floor, the floor um, diagrams that were built back in the remodels in the 2000s, that's the Missouri River around Fort Benton. Uh, we were looking for a new um, floor mural. Um, so we've got the white cliffs of the Missouri will be added there where you stand in the ticketing line um, to add on to the, uh, the floor mural. So that would be kind of cool, a little bit about our, our region. That's kind of what it'll look like. We're changing the uh, signage and the facade. We're going to be doing some work on the canopy that you walk under when you go out there. That roof has completely failed. It's got an internal drainage system. Um, somehow it drains into itself and, try, and then into the ground. Uh, we've already put in the sewer pipe behind it there to pick up the water. We'll be doing, uh, uh -oh. uh, we'll be doing uh, uh, some renovation to the front of it this year. We'll be adding new signage that uh, we're taking down the, the sign that burned out last year and we'll be putting up these new signs. Um, last thing I was going to mention, we'll have some new industrial condos opening uh, this summer. Uh, this is the area along the interstate as you drive out of town where all the billboards are. If there's a billboard, that's airport property. Um, that's where they go. And what they'll be is a 30 by 80 sleeve. You can buy one, you can lease one, uh, and it'll be hooked up to oil water separators. Um, we're hoping to, to attract a lot of small industrial businesses up there that need space. Uh, these will be 23, 25 foot ceiling heights clear span, uh, industrial power, industrial water. So um, if you've got a, a project or know someone that needs some industrial space, bring them up to the airport. We'll have some of these ready this summer. So I got. All right. That's a lot, John, thank you. And let's fill up those industrial bays and keep them building industrial. That's one of the things that when we're working with 
projects that are looking for industrial space statewide, there is a dearth of industrial space. So we are really excited that the airport's taking this on and we think that they'll get filled up. All right, our next speaker is with Alluvian. I'd like to welcome Kate Nesson with Alluvian. Kate, come on up. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kate Nesson. And, uh, I'm with Alluvian Pellets. Um, I'm here to talk today about our Roosevelt Collaborative, collaborative Project. Um, so some of you know, uh, Alluvian is committed to doing healthcare different. Um, and we know that medical care is only part of an individual's health um, and ultimately our community's health. Um, so as a review, we offer a wide range of medical services at our locations downtown and through our uh, school-based sites. Um, we have an on-site lab and pharmacy, and it's a federally qualified health center. We're able to offer a lot of services on a slight easy scale or at a discounted price. Um, and then we offer uh, care coordination for helping folks who need help with financial services, uh, food insecurity, legal challenges, transportation, and so on. Um, and I'm, I'm new to Alluvian, and one of the most exciting parts of being part of this team is that we're always looking for new ways uh, to create more opportunity for our patients and our staff and our communities, um, and in particular, how Alluvian can leverage our drive for serving Great Falls community with impacting economic development and work, workforce expansion. And so that brings us to the Roosevelt Project. So uh, this project, we will address some of our biggest needs, uh, both medical uh, and workforce, by uh, rehabilitating the Roosevelt Building, the school building on 25th and 2nd. Um, we will uh, stand up a new office and spectrum services line, uh, expand pediatric services. Uh, we will open a child care center with an employee benefit option, um, about 40 children, a uh, space for 40 children. Um, and local businesses will have an opportunity to provide uh, or to sign up for uh, the employee benefit as well. Um, we'll have space for community serving organizations to co-locate. And then the top two um, parts of the floors of the building will eventually be housing. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this building. That's a really cool building. It opened in 1927 um, and retired from school use in the uh, 2021 school year, has a little bit of work to do. So you can see this is how it looks right now. Um, we will be keeping the gym and keeping it as a gym, um, but the playground will be remodeled. Uh, we'll try to keep some of the, the older <laughs> leaded windows and some of the, the more historical aspects of the building um, part of that, but it will be redesigned. Um, there's a little bit of remedi excuse me, remediation to do. Um, but it's exciting. So our impact, we're looking at at least a $10 million investment into Great Falls. Our first year, we're looking at adding 30 professional level jobs um, and seeing um, at least 2,300 new patients. Most of those are low income to medium income families. Uh, this is my favorite part. Construct, I wrote it down, so it's gonna happen, right? Um, construction uh, is slated to start as soon as we can. Um, but we know that timelines are going to be with construction right now. So um, phase one will start as soon as it can. Phase two, we're looking at completion in 2025. Um, and we'll contract with early childhood education services through an RFP um, and other community um, services. So please let me know if you are interested in any of that. Well done, thank you. We're very grateful for all of these services in our community and excited about this new project. Uh, something that she mentioned was the cleanup that has to happen to make this project work. And that's another tool that we can bring to the table to make deals happen and real estate projects happen. Um, before you purchase commercial real estate, we highly recommend you do a phase one just to see if there's lead paint or asbestos, any type of contamination. And we've put together really great resources and tools to help offset the cost of that phase one, and in some cases, uh, reduce the cost of the cleanup then that has to happen in projects like this. Um, we see that as a really critical tool in economic development because we can take properties that are off the tax roll and get them back on the tax roll um, by getting them cleaned up and, uh, and, and built. Uh, 
an example of that would be the uh, Easter Seals Goodwill headquarter downtown that was formerly a first interstate bank that had a lot of cleanup that had to happen before we could move over 100 professionals downtown every day, which that ripple effect for downtown is huge. So we like to use those tools and resources to do that. If you have questions about cleaning up property, talk to Lillian Sunwall on our team or Shannon Clancy, they're over there uh, and they can help you out with that. So um, we are still buzzing with excitement from Montana Specialty Mills announcement because it's fantastic when any time that we can utilize our assets, which our agriculture base is a strong asset, especially in North Central Montana, um, that provides really great jobs and really great tax base and primary sector income coming in. This next speaker um, is talking about uh, their update on their project, which is Montana Renewables. And I'd like to welcome Ron Caldwell to talk about this project. Ron? There you are. Good morning. This is exciting. Um, Want to give a quick update on where we're at on, at the plant for our Montana Renewables project. Um, sorry, that was a, a photo of our primary renewables unit. Um, just for reference, that's the reactor where all the magic happens, and then that's all the equipment that makes that reactor work. This is a very simple uh, process flow diagram that, uh, or block flow diagram that explains what we're doing. So we finished up our renewable fuels unit, which uh, we bring in the, the vegetable and animal um, fats, those type of oils, and uh, we convert it into renewable uh, diesel. Um, we've been doing this since November. Um, been operating stably since then, even through the, the cold snap, which is very difficult to get Crisco to float um, when it's that cold. Um, we produced about 2 million gallons of renewable diesel that has all gone to the, the West Coast. Um, and so we're in business. Um, right now, we're working on our uh, new hydrogen unit. Um, that's going up in the center of the facility and, and we'll be completing that in the next, um, we're actually completing it this month and going through our commissioning and startup. So it'll be in operation this first quarter. We're also nearing completion of our pre-treatment unit. Um, our pre-treatment unit allows us to bring in more raw feedstock. Everything has to be clean before it hits our reactor. And so we either pay someone else to clean it or we clean it ourselves. So um, we'll be able to start cleaning the feedstock ourselves. And this also opens up the, the path to get more local agriculture into our plant as feedstock. So we're ex really excited about um, the pre-treatment and, and that'll be up in this first quarter as well. So, um, you can see, sorry, you can see that our, uh, our feedstock mix includes um, canola oil. Um, the EPA has finished their approval and certification of canola oil for this pathway to renewable diesel. So that really opens us up to local agriculture as well. So that's exciting. Um, and then our product mix, when we're up and, and fully running, will be primarily renewable diesel but we'll also be producing renewable, sustainable aviation fuel, which is a lot of high demand for that right now um, and in the future. Um, and we'll be producing a little bit of renewable naphtha, which goes into gasoline blends. Um, so this is um, our first, one of our rail cars of Palo, one of our first ones that we offloaded into our facility. And now we're pushing it out onto rail cars heading to the West Coast. One thing I want to point out when we're talking about the role of agriculture into this value added market that is being generated um, with our facility is there's kind of a donut of where we can get our supplies for our feedstock. And there's not much here in the middle. 
Um, so this is a great opportunity um, and we're working with other um, agencies and other investors to look at if we can get a, a seed crushing facility somewhere in the state of Montana, um, then that really shortens up our supply chain and opens this up to uh, Montana ag businesses. So um, when we talk speed to the price, this has been a very aggressive schedule. Um, we did our engineering kickoff um, just a year and a half ago, um, and we did our startup of our RDU back in uh, November. And we're quickly going into our startup of our next two units. And then we're looking into the future at other growth opportunities and possibly going into a very high SAP production, sustainable aviation fuel production versus renewable diesel. Um, so we're looking at those in the future. Um, so far, our employment growth has grown about 50 to 60 employees. We still have a number of professional positions that need to get filled. Um, so we're excited. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited to have you. I'm just so appreciative of the high wage jobs and the continued innovation and investments that the refinery makes in our community and has for uh, 100 years now. Um, they are an excellent employer in our community. Um, and they provide opportunities. As he said, we are on the hunt for an oil seed crush plant in our region. Uh, and yeah, he said Montana. No, we want it in north central Montana. Um, so give us any leads you have. We are working on a list of targets. We're working with uh, Calumet on that. And uh, we want to get those, uh, get an oil seed crush plant here. If you want to talk agriculture, we have Katisha Campbell and Justin Locke on our team. Uh, they're over there in the back. Uh, they are our food and agriculture specialists uh, to get food ingredients and uh, bioproduct companies here in Great Falls utilizing our natural resources. All right, so our next presentation is from uh, MSU Nursing and Susan Laprell on their new project here. Susan, come on up. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here representing MSU Mark and Robin Jones College of Nursing. Can I get a go cats, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so last year when I was here, we had just announced that we received here at Montana State the largest gift ever given to a college of nursing at $101 million. So I'm here to provide some updates about that. But before I do that, if, for those of you not, in, uh, not familiar with our um, structure, Although we emanate out of MSU in Bozeman, we have four additional satellite campuses, each housing nursing students so that we can utilize best the healthcare facilities across the state. Here in Great Falls, we were the first nursing campus after coming from MSU, and we're now one of three nursing programs in this town, along with UP and Great Falls College. So for those also not aware, we are located, oops, Oh, so right in Great Falls, we have just under 100 nursing students, undergrad nursing students. We employ 26 part-time and full-time faculty, and we have some administrative staff. So we are currently located and have been leasing uh, space, gratefully, from many entities over the years since 1937 here. And we're currently located on the Benefits West Campus, uh, right in an off-building there. So that is us. You can see the college instructor in me comes out when I do this. So I'd like to provide just a little bit of background. Currently college-wide, we graduate just around 300 nursing students statewide a year. And here in Great Falls, we graduate about 48 students a year. What we project for those of you interested in healthcare is we'll be going to this. By 2030, because of this gift, partially, we'll be able to increase our output to at least 400 student graduates a year at the undergraduate level. And then here in Great Falls, we anticipate that by 2030, we'll be putting out 72 undergraduate nursing students. So the hallmark of this gift, however, was that we are gonna be able to build five new from the ground up buildings across the state. This is a tremendous investment that Mark and Robin Jones put in us. So just an update here, we are very grateful. Benefice was the first in the state, Mr. Goodnow, 
to donate land to the College of Nursing. So we're going to be located near the Toro Medical School on the northeast um, parcel of land. So we're, we're so grateful for that. Architects have been chosen. So statewide Cushing Taro Architects are partnering with an architect team out of uh, California, the co-architects. Co-architects have a specialty um, in healthcare educational sites and buildings like that. And so the planning is underway. That's been fascinating to be a part of. We're hoping to seek legislative uh, approval this session. This is important because even though we have the gift that will help with the building, it is still a state school. And so for the operations and management piece to be uh, carried on by the state, we have to have that approval. So we're hoping to have that. Fingers crossed, everything coming together as planned. We hope to break ground this year. Um, and again, it's gonna be, uh, we're pretty excited about it. One last um, update from the College of Nursing is just about a month ago, we did launch a new program called Montana Direct Entry. This is a program where any graduate from a high school, high school in Montana or homeschooler in Montana is guaranteed a spot in the Mark and Robin Jones College of Nursing. They just have to maintain a GPA of 3.0 uh, and then the spot is theirs to lose. So we're very excited about that, hoping to meet our land grant mission to serve the folks of Montana. So thanks so much, everybody. Delighted to be here. That's fantastic. Thank you, Sue. We really appreciate that. All right. So uh, you heard Colonel Voorhees at the beginning. He mentioned housing was a challenge, and he mentioned child care is an issue, and that is another top priority for our community, a top challenge and opportunity for our community. So I would love to welcome Lori O'Leary to come and talk about the Community, community Early Education Center. There you are. Come on up, Lori. Good morning. So this is really exciting. I have not been to an Ignite before, and um, it was just really fun to see what all projects are coming up and to hear about all the growth in Great Falls. And um, we have some really exciting um, opportunities coming up for childcare. And like she mentioned, um, we've got growth that, um, and in order to have in order to have growth, we have to have childcare in place so that those people who are coming into our community have a place to take their children. So um, we have some great childcare centers in our community, and this is going to be another really exciting opportunity. So we're located in the community rec center, and we're going to be growing in the community rec center. So currently we have, um, we're licensed for 48, and we're going to be growing. So. Um, and why childcare, as you guys can see, it's the impact on the workforce. Um, right now, the labor participation rate, as you guys can see in Great Falls is lower than it is in Montana. And so hopefully we can get that um, to improve. Um, the childcare need in Great Falls is between 420 and 70, 736 spots, and that's just going to get larger. Um, childcare rates, uh, some of our challenges is that we, um, are competing with the corporate retail and um, the food service um, wages. And we have to improve childcare rates in order to um, cover our operating costs. And that's gonna increase the cost of care for families, which is a challenge. Um, find the clicker here. This is our timeline and our project basics. Oops, I must've clicked twice. Oh no, it's correct, sorry. Um, and uh, we're going to be growing, as you can see on the right, um, from 48 spots. As, and our goal is to get up to 140 by the end of 2024. So that will supply a lot more childcare in our community. And then we are really a true collaboration between the community. As you can see on the right, um, those are our committee members and on the left, um, we've got all of the people that we have collaborated with in the community with our project partners, our advisors, and um, all, all of the targeted businesses that we're working with. And anybody else um, is welcome to work with us as well. We also are working with employers to establish employer partnerships so that they can provide 
a benefit to their employees. That's kind of the trend um, right now so that you can help um, bring in employees is to have, provide childcare as a potential benefit. So um, you are welcome to contact me to uh, work on that if that's something that you would like to do. And I've got two other child care centers as well that we can work on that for those locations as well. If you have any questions, I will be around afterwards. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Really appreciate you and this for our day. So we have just a few more to go uh, before we wrap up and invite everybody to network and meet each other. One of the other tidbits that I would love to share with you um, is our business advising services. And that's probably something that we're really well known for, um, but there's still people that don't realize uh, that we will work with hundreds of existing businesses and hundreds of entrepreneurs that have wild dreams, great dreams, just would-be startups. Um, and we put our team through rigorous training and certifications so that we can help with financial planning, so that we can help with strategic planning, that we can help with marketing, that we can help with websites, that we can provide any of the services that help businesses go from large to small businesses. So if you are interested in business advising services or if your neighbor's starting a business, businesses are exponentially more successful nationally. It's in the stats if they work with a small business advisor. Uh, they make it past the five-year mark in much higher proportion than any other startups. So Rich Gannon is here. Um, and there he is. He's over there in the corner. Uh, but Rich Gannon will be wandering around afterwards too if you would like to meet him so that you have uh, a face to a name and know who you're making referrals to. Well, I'm really pleased to bring up my dear friend, Dr. and the first dean of Montana's first medical university, Elizabeth Palmarosi. Come on up. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And, and I would like to first start by uh, thanking uh, the Great Falls Development Authority. They have been an absolutely excellent partner and have helped us at every step of the way here from our beginning to where we are today. And I want to kind of give you an update about where we are. We are Toro University, Montana and the Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine. We have been approved to start recruiting and accepting students and we will be starting those students in July of 23. So it's coming up very, very fast. A quick update on the building. You all have been watching it go up and with the help of our uh, Slutton Construction and LPW Architecture. This building has been moving along at a very rapid pace, and we're extremely thrilled for not just the building, but everything that's going to go on inside. It'll be a state-of-the-art facility. Um, of course, we will have anatomy labs. It's about 100,000 square feet, three floors, uh, state-of-the-art education uh, available throughout, and uh, we will have a small research lab within our building, but we have a research partner that you'll hear about in just a minute. Um, we will uh, conveniently located, as most of you have seen, walking distance to many of our partners. And so here's a little bit of the construction gone on, lanes, things are slow, whether it was 20 below or not, people were out there working and we very, very greatly appreciate that. So a little bit about what this brings to Montana besides medical students, which we are here to promote underserved uh, healthcare and increase the number of underrepresented minorities in medicine. It is what we are bringing to not just Great Falls, but to the state of Montana. And as you can see, about a roughly $50 million building has brought in 278 new jobs, a significant number of faculty and staff will we've been asked. We will hire about 90 people. We are well into that. We are proud to say that we have hired several Montanans, whether they started in Montana or are returning to Montana. We're very proud of how that is progressing and don't have enough time today to go into all of that. Um, but what we will be having at the building is 125 new students each year per year for four years. Their first two years of education will go on in that building. Years three and four are with our clinical partners, and we have clinical partners benefits as one and others throughout the state. 
So we were very excited about that. You will see a lot about the new jobs that that will bring in over time because it isn't just the four years of medical school that will continue, but over time, these students will hopefully be back to stay in Montana. They will bring their families. Um, we will be there to help with the airport. There certainly will be um, a lot of need for groceries, other economic impacts, restaurants, um, housing, all of the things that increase uh, the economy. And we will um, have a, see a significant increase in population all the way up through what we projected it by 2040 of those uh, graduates that will be remaining. We will also have uh, 50 students in the master's program. They may not quite be ready for medical school, but um, that is a step toward that. And we are also partnered with uh, the Glossland Research Institute. And we also have recently announced at a GSCA event, the uh, scholarships, we have at least eight local and uh, business partners who have offered scholarships to our medical students. And we also announced the one from uh, our Fleischman, which is a million dollar scholarship to start one of the first uh, medical student training programs in the, not just the state of Montana, but in the country. And we're very, very proud of that. So with that, I thank you and hopefully made it in just in time. Thank you, Elizabeth. And welcome to Great Falls. All right. So our next speaker uh, was supposed to be here, but unfortunately, I uh, got called away, Jerome, um, who is uh, the leader of the Rib Chop House. So he was able to send us a video that we're going to play um, uh, and give you an update on their project. Go ahead. Astro, no. What you know about rolling down in the deep when your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze. When these people talk too much, put it in slow motion. Yeah, I feel like an astronaut in the ocean. Hey, what you know about rolling down in the deep when your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze. When these people talk too much, put it in slow motion. Yeah, I feel like an astronaut in the ocean. She say that I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, that's true. I believe in G-O-D. Don't believe in T-H-O-T. She keep playing me dumb. I'm a player for fun. Y'all don't really know my mental. Let me give you the picture like stencil. Falling out in a drought. No flow rain was I'm pouring down. See that pain was all around. See my mode was kind of lounge. Didn't know which which way to turn. Flow was cool, but I still felt burned. Energy up, you can feel my surge. I'ma kill everything like this purge. Let's just get this straight for a second. I'm a we are really excited to have Rib Chop joining our downtown Great Falls team. They are just finishing their build out. They will be opening this spring in the former Wells Fargo building down on First Avenue North and Third. So be watching for that grand opening and then go and show them some love and have some of that great food. Um, okay, so I would like to uh, bring up uh, Brett. Brett, you had some words that you wanted. He's also testifying at the Montana legislature between between speakers. Here we go, here we go. I'm glad they have a virtual option. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Brett. You had a good time? Pretty exciting. Let's get a round of round for all of the presenters. And I'd like a round for everyone who's been helping all of these presenters because it's been a tremendous team effort to make these things happen. So if you've been part of it or you know people part of it, let's give a round for all of those people. Oh. I've always wanted to say this. There's one more thing. We have another announcement. I love a drum line. Hear it for the CMR drum line. Okay, I'd like to invite our dignitaries to come up here, uh, right over here again. Cool. And let's bring up Pasta Montana. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, Brett, thank you. Uh, thank you for that fanfare. Certainly unexpected, uh, but uh, Pasta Montana is very proud to announce that we will be adding to our pasta factory here in Great Falls uh, to the tune of about $7 million, adding a brand new production line to our facility. <laughs> All right. Very good. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I uh, learned of that band here just uh, about an hour and a half ago. Certainly unexpected and don't necessarily feel worthy of that. But at any rate, I'm Randy Gilbertson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Plant Manager at Pasta Montana here in Great Falls. Uh, very proud to be part of this event. Very proud to be part. of value Pasta Montana and grown currently annually at a current capacity of 85 million pounds of dry pasta per year. Uh, where is Pasta Montana sold? So we export to Japan. We're owned by a Japanese company and a good share of what we produce gets exported to Japan and Taiwan. Uh, food service makes up a large part of our business, uh, both the U.S. and Canada. Uh, uh, dry pasta for restaurant use, both branded and our own uh, uh, private labels. And uh, industrial, so bulk pasta sold as an ingredient for value-added applications. Think frozen meals, uh, uh, different uh, soup applications, uh, frozen entrees, and uh, the pandemic fueled a rapid increase in demand for that segment of our business. Uh, a few of our customers here, kind of a smattering of different uh, food service, um, as well as uh, some of the uh, value-added uh, customers that we have. We have a great relationship with General Mills here at Great Falls. Uh, Pasta Montana contracts with local Durham producers. About 70,000 acres per year of, of what we use that Durham is delivered to create, uh, General Mills Great Falls. And they provide the semolina, the uh, raw ingredient for our pasta production. Uh, kind of a fun slide here. We put together every year, get a, get a view of where our Durham is, is grown. And uh, I always enjoy showing that. It literally is a golden triangle, uh, which, is, which is kind of fun. Uh, so for our announcement, yes, uh, in uh, at the end of this year, we will start to install a uh, brand new 3,000 kg per hour short goods production line. Uh, we were here uh, probably about seven years ago and making this, a similar announcement for a long goods production line. Uh, we've been operating uh, basically uh, in an oversold situation uh, out of short goods capacity. That's where we've seen the... Uh, uh, most rapid increase in our demand. So that line cost, as we announced, was uh, will be about $7 million. Uh, oops. Uh, the new line will increase our factory production by about 25%, increase our staff by 15 full-time equivalents. We're currently at about 125, and we'll hope to get up to 140. And increase our local Durham demand by 500,000 bushels to require contracts an additional 12,000 acres of Durham production with area farmers. It will pay local contracts about $350,000 in infrastructure and build out costs. And uh, with any luck, be fully operational in February, February of, of 2024. And again, GFDA team, thank you, Payne West, for sponsoring the event. Uh, look forward to uh, being back again soon. Thank you. Oh, let's thank Randy and Hero and Dan for that great announcement and the great job that Pasta Montana does. Woo I also would love to get another round of applause for uh, Payne West Insurance. Uh, let's also thank Metal Arc Country Club, uh, Marty Severson and his team. And one more round for the uh, CMR drumline. So 
we're pretty proud and excited, and I hope you are too, about all the successes that we've had. But I'm hungry for more. And I want to know a single question. Are you hungry for more? Yes. Are you hungry for more? Well, we've been doing a deep dive over the last year and a half. Many of you have been involved in it. We've done SWOT analysis for the market. We've done SWOT analysis for our organization. We've looked at housing market, uh, uh, childcare market. We've dug into tourism. We've dug into food ag uh, and bioprocessing. We've looked at our transportation costs. We've looked at a number of other competitive factors. And we're ready to start rolling out a new economic transformation strategy. The strategy as it's evolving is uh, designed to take advantage of all of the assets uh, that we have in the region and all of the assets that we have to build upon, but also address some of the weaknesses in our market, weaknesses that hold us back from attracting and retaining talent uh, and attracting uh, new private sector investment. And these are gonna come out in four uh, areas of focus. First and foremost is people. You don't have a strong economy without great people. So under people, we've talked about housing, we've talked about childcare, we've talked about education and workforce uh, development. So that's gonna be the first focus area of this new plan is all about making sure that we have the people that our employers need and that future employers need. Uh, and also we have the people that make for a great community. Uh, the second is place. We have to be a competitive place. All of you could live just about anywhere and you choose to live here. A few of you came from out of town, we appreciate it, but please stay. Uh, we are one of the Montana communities that is not saying go away. We want you to come here. So we have to be a competitive place. Place is all about downtown and riverfront and our commercial corridors and having the type of arts and recreation and entertainment and dining and uh, shopping and, and what have you. It's all about healthcare services. It's a quality of education for, uh, for children and the opportunities for higher education. There are a lot of things about place that affect people, but there are also a lot of things about place that affect business investment, transportation and logistics costs, the ability to have infrastructure there when you need it, natural gas and electric uh, supply for large projects, airline flights, all those factors that affect competitiveness uh, at place. So that's our second area of focus. Our third area of focus is actively pursuing opportunities that we have to grow and diversify our economy and create higher wage career opportunities. Even the best product or service, the best company around, if you're not marketing what you have, you're not gonna be successful. So we've been out there pitching, but we all need to step up our efforts, sharpen our focus, and really go after some key opportunities. And we do have opportunities that we've identified through these deep dive analyses. Now, the world's constantly changing. I don't need to tell you that. The economy's constantly changing. So these opportunities are going to change over time. And oftentimes the window of opportunity opens and closes very quickly. So that's back to our competitiveness. We need to be ready as a competitive place that when a window of opportunity opens, we can latch onto it and make sure that we can make that happen here. And then the fourth area of focus is how it all comes together. And that is about team. I'm really proud of all of the partnerships that we have all formed. We, everyone in this room and many beyond that, that we have formed to make things happen. That's how it works. The smallest deal, a small one person business startup, we think has a half dozen partners. 
You might have a landlord, you might have a property owner, you might have a real estate broker, you might have a banker, you might have an insurance agent or an attorney or an accountant. Of course, if you don't have those, your success uh, is going to be very uh, suspect. The larger deals have dozens and dozens of partners because we want to have investment here and have ground breakings and ribbon cuttings and what have you. But that's just the start. We want companies that are very successful here, long period of time. And we've had some wonderful examples of that today with the expansion of the Great Falls Clinic and the expansion of Pasta Montana and Montana Specialty Mills and uh, Calumet Montana Refining. That's what it's all about. We get them here, we nurture them over long periods of time and through their smart decisions, they continue to prosper and, and grow. So it's, it's all about team. This plan is gonna involve everyone to make it happen. Uh, we're trying to transform the economy and we're, we're about maybe halfway there. There's one key measure that I like to use uh, and, and I know it's just a, a mass measure, but when we started out, our average annual wage was 63% of the national average. And our cost of living was estimated to be 93% of the national average. That's a 30 point gap between earnings and cost of living. That puts a tremendous burden on government, on nonprofits, on faith-based institutions, but most importantly, it puts tremendous pressure on people uh, and families. We've closed that gap quite a bit. We're at about 70% of the national average with wages. Nothing to write about except we have from 63 to 73%. And our cost of living hasn't gone down, but it's gone down as a percentage of the national average. Uh, the most recent that we have is, is uh, just over 86%. Our dream is that we'll be the one community in the West that offers a fantastic quality of life and economic opportunity that has wages above the cost of living. And that's why it's so important that as we grow the economy, we have great places for people to live, we have affordable, high quality childcare and education. It's that entire, uh, entire package. But just think if we can pull this off, and I think we can, and I think we can because everywhere I turn in Great Falls, throughout Cascade County, in Shoto and Bab and Conrad and Haver and Fort Benton, we get to work with the most incredible entrepreneurs real estate developers, public officials, everyone working together to make these things, uh, make these things happen. We're incredibly optimistic uh, as, as a team. We're gonna work hard and we're gonna be asking you to continue to invest uh, your time and your energy uh, and your money <laughs> into uh, making these things uh, happen. It's gonna be a fantastic 2023. Um, uh, just take any one of these projects, having the first medical school in Montana with such a fantastic institution as Turo University, a decade ago, some of you in this room told us it was impossible. Well, it's a lot of fun to make the impossible happen. So happy new year. Thank you for coming. Please network. I would love to have an, another event next Friday uh, to uh, celebrate more announcements. And we do have more announcements in the works that just weren't quite ready to come together again. Thank you. What's up next, Marty? We got Romeo and I. Yeah. You know what?